we're gonna get out of here. We are going to Tennessee, Kentucky, and here we go. Well guys, I'm at Firestone and replaced my front two tires before the trip. One got a nail on them and I'm taking care of that right now. Adversity. We're gonna do a Greg Blanchard interview special. So you gotta bend over like this. Oh yeah. Coffee. What do you think about our drive so far? Uh, the drive is long, and it was uh, it was interesting. We no, had it was it, it was interesting had, at all. Oh, had, uh, it was interesting. We had to find a few tire shops along the way, and uh, yeah. thankfully, I think we're good now. How many stops did we do? I don't know, man. I lost count after 12, 15. Yeah, I mean, like, <clears throat> what I gotta say is I'll bring that air compressor next time. <laughs> that you can hook up to your 12 volt battery. Uh, shameless plug Z-Pro battery. <laughs> but uh, yeah, air compressor, attach it to your tire just in case you get a flat. Well, Hopefully it's a slow leak. Right. Or a medium leak. Well, you got a can of fix a flat now to carry with you. Anyways, see you guys there. Peace. What up guys? Last day of practice is over. Day one starts tomorrow. I'm headed over to the captain's meeting to register our, get officially registered and then get our um, catch boards examined. So let's go over there and check it out. Hopefully it sticks, my board's kind of dirty. I know, just saying. What have you been doing with it? It's collecting dust. <laughs> <laughs> Not fish line? Okay. Your Good luck to you. <laughs> you like oh, mine's, really? Mine's dirty oh, so. dang. <laughs> did you tell me that you, sent, that you did fill out the registration form online? All right, guys. It is day one of the KBF National Championship. Besides the National Championship, there's a Trail Series Championship and a Challenge Series Championship which I've been working for to qualify and to put myself in great standing to give my chance to make it to the 10 house, which is the best 10 anglers in the kayak bass fishing community of the whole nation, including other countries like Mexico. To have a chance to fish with them and fish against them, it's amazing. But the top prize, $24,000, I believe, for first place, and it's fishing tough, but we're gonna go out there, see what we can do, and get them, boys. Peace. All right, lines in, guys. It's getting there. It's getting there. My toes are numb, dude. Every day they've been numb. Yeah. yeah. I haven't got bit, dude. Dude, I'm seeing a few on my screen, but they're laying about six feet. Like, that's why I'm just like looking. You said six feet? Six feet, yeah. You haven't got bit either? Nope. Dude, I think it has to do like maybe when the sun comes out, they come up shallower. Yeah. Oh, it was Joe, guys. Cool. Uh, cool gentleman that we met the lawn tramp yesterday he's from indiana super cool he ended up fishing with greg for a little bit so we're gonna make a huge run well i mean that depends what's your definite huge but we're gonna go work our way back to get a sh sh to fish this crankbait on shallow flat right in front of those trees over there about say eighth of a mile or a no that's not eighth of a mile what am i thinking that's like a quarter mile 
if not more, half a mile over there. Don't know what to get, I don't know what to do, guys. It's puzzling because got bit over there yesterday, but there's no pattern. Yesterday, the wind picked up quite a bit. Not as, there wasn't much wind compared to yesterday. But yeah, maybe that was the deal is that I needed more wind in order to get that bite going. So we're gonna pack it up and we are going to another location about an hour away and we'll see if that pays off if not i gave it my sh the best i you know i did the best that i could now that's all that i can do so the degrees actually dropped from like 63 down to 58 in a matter of four days five days of fishing so just goes to tell you that it's a cold front that big huge temperature drop so we're gonna pack it up and do what we can over at the other spot and just try to stay positive. Ooh. Oh my gosh, it didn't smoke. That was my, literally my last cast. I was told myself in my head, that was my last cast with the crankbait. I'm putting it down. I'm not going out like that, but what's going on, Lord? Is that a sign? Like, don't give up? What is it? Oh, gee whiz. That's a big one, too. Only if I had five. Gee whiz. Mouth closed. All right, guys, 16 and a half. Good fish. A little too late, but you never know. On the Ghost Minnow RC 1.5.
Yes. <sighs> Guys, this is crazy. Finally, it shows up. All right, guys. 14 and a half, I believe, or 14 and a quarter. Release. 14 and a quarter. Release. There we go. <laughs> I thought it was a fish. It was a stick. <laughs> no wonder it wasn't fighting back. <laughs> well, at least I didn't skunk. It's two fish, guys. Yeah, so the move was worth it. Spent three or four hours at my first spot. Didn't pay off, decided to pack it up. Take an hour drive up north on Kentucky where uh, Greg and I found some fish and uh, Greg found some fish congregated along this bank that has like a little ledge on it. And I uh, just cast my crankbait over there and 16 and a half and, or 16 and three quarters and then a uh, 14 and a quarter so definitely paid off going to this spot but i think a little too late but we're gonna keep on at it we hit we have an hour and 10 minutes no two hours and 10 minutes for three fish not impossible i've done it before it's just a very tough bite oh my only bait guys Saved me sixteen dollars on that crankbait. All right, let's go. So just to give you the conditions, when we got here, the water temp was around sixty-four to sixty-five degrees, and then it dropped after the cold front because we had some cold weather, wind, and a little bit of rain calm. The rainstorm was, uh, wasn't cold front, but right after the rain came the cold wind and the water temps dropped from like 64 all the way down to 56. So these fish are just shell shocked. They just don't know what to do right now. Some are shallow, some are deep. A lot of them are on like different transitions. Some are like full, full spawn or full fall pattern. Some are still stuck um, in that summer, late summer pattern. And then some are already in that winter pattern. They're all fed up out suspending somewhere deep. But I actually haven't found a full-blown fall pattern fish, except for some spots during practice. I, I found some spots that were actively feeding in shallow bay where there was boat slips, but I haven't found any largemouth wanting to feed up in the bay. No busting on bay. They're just like right at the mouth of these bays on this riprap sitting right at that ledge where it goes from six inches of water or zero feet of water down to 2.5 or uh, the sweet zone is four where I caught those two fish. So it's just a steady drop to four and then it flattens out. Um, but I haven't really caught much on in the back of these bays, like I said, um, they just haven't been key for me. So we're going to get out of here. I'm not feeling it. My crankbait's not feeling it. Oh, oh my gosh, there's a bass right there. That was definitely a bass. Maybe we should continue down this bank. I just saw um, 
bass chasing some shad. So the shad was, uh, or they are back here, guys. Number three. Stay on. They are back here. No! Oh! Oh! Oh, that was number three, guys. They are back here. pop it free the bass hits it and then i hand line it in oh my gosh what are the chances of that what the freak i'm all tangled up here i can't even try to cut all that line oh my gosh what a story a story to tell everybody <laughs> that's crazy Mouth closed, 16 and a quarter it touches. Let's go. Freak yeah, let's get a, let's get a video of it. All right, this is a uh, 16 and a quarter identifier release board. Wow, that was gnarly. What a story. Story that I could tell everybody, that's crazy. All right, all right, all right, all right. I'm getting to it, I'm getting to it. Alarm, be quiet. Hey Siri, stop alarm. Well, I got one more fish to submit. Ended up with three fish. Uh, I'll talk to you guys later when I get to the house. Peace. You had a You had a decent day, like compared to the field. Yeah, we pre-fished there yesterday, caught a couple small ones. I felt like there was holding some, you know, some numbers there if I if I didn't beat it up too bad. So yeah. decided to go back there because I felt like there was more um, more water to cover in that area. <clears throat> and uh, decided to make the run this morning. It was probably like a two-mile run. And you stayed kind of close. And yeah. uh, I made the chilly run. It was like 28 degrees this morning. So we were like bundled up like... Oh yeah, so the water temperature dropped from 64 degrees to 56 or 54 yeah, degrees. Yeah, big temp change. Yeah, it was like a 10 degree difference between our practice, mm -hmm. um, our first day of practice compared to today's water temps. So that's a 10 degree difference that it dropped. Luckily for us, it wasn't that windy this morning when we were driving. And so, you know, pretty much got to the spot. Yeah. I uh, waited for lines in at 630 and I pretty much within five or six casts caught my first fish yeah you caught all your fish in the first Early. half an hour yeah two fish yeah. two fish were in the first half an hour so i felt good like okay i'm getting the day started right and mm -hmm. then uh took me about another hour and i caught my third fish and uh i felt like i was on my way to get my limit and i just couldn't make it happen the rest of the day it just I covered a lot more water. I moved yeah. around. I went back to my spot later in the day to try to see if I could get something at the end of the day. And yeah. I just couldn't. I had one follower and didn't catch him. It was all on crankbait, right? Like Squirrel. we were all throwing square bill. What was your, your uh, I was showing the Berkeley Fritz side. And then your other one? You um, caught off two baits, didn't you? Yeah, one was like a KVD square bill. Oh, just, KVD 1.5 yeah. or like 1.0? Like the sexy shad 1.5. 1.5? 
Okay. Was it the flat side or was it just a regular round? It was just a regular one. Regular one? Okay. So I think it was day two of practice. Oh yeah, it was day two of practice. We researched the leg a little bit. It was uh, one of the ramps up north, closer to the dam. Greg lost one in the morning at a spot and I gotta thank him because I fished his spot. He kind of did all the work for me. Um, ended up catching three over there on a square bill. Lucky but the crab. point is, you tried to stay away from it the whole time you went there today, right? Like yeah. You fished everything else, and then yeah. You're like... So I lost fish. I lost fish um, during practice in the same area. Asepi was a flat, and then I caught two spots in some boat slips, but none of my places panned out. So I wanted to check out what Greg Greg had. Thanks, and uh, there was three three fish that really helped me out. So I got to hand it to Greg for for uh, sharing the juice and um, letting, me, letting me know what's going on in that spot. You know, actually, Greg really opened my eyes in terms of like launching at the same spot is and sharing knowledge with each other. It's, it's like a team effort. And I feel like uh, Greg is one of the best roomies that I've had on this KBF tour because... Uh, because he helps me out. He he helps me out. I try to help him out, figure out the fish, you know, any any questions that he has and any questions that I have, you know, we kind of help each other. We piggyback off of each other. And we can divide up an area of the lake, like, quicker if we're just like, you know, we split off and, yeah. and see if we can figure out something. They're deep, they're there, shallow, they're there is the something. Docks. There is something to, like, launch at the same spot and cover Twice all grounds. Water all grounds instead of um going instead solo. of going solo all the way down south and then going solo all the way down north so yeah. we don't want to spread ourselves too thin there's a big lake 100 big miles lake. yeah so. so so he got one side i got the other side and uh you know i just gotta say thanks to greg for finding the juice but i'm gonna let him have the spot tomorrow no, there's no more fish there. We'll there's going to be fish there. <laughs> there's still fish there. I lost I lost one there. <laughs> He's still there. He's still got a hook hanging out of his mouth. <laughs> but we're going to see what's going to go on the next day. But uh, And yeah, it's going to be day two. But yeah, we'll see you guys. gonna go to your other spot? There we go, didn't skunk. Wow, that was a grind. 12 and 3 quarters. Fish, den of fire.
Yeah. All right, cheers, bro. Thanks for helping me out. Top 100. Thanks for helping me out to get into the no top shit. 100, man. You did it on your own. You still had to catch them. Yeah, I can do without you, though. Dude, we just found a little spot. It was tiny. That's the problem. We needed a 200-yard bank like that. I mean, I mean <laughs> like... We weren't going to win it. No. But, you know, thanks to you, Greg, I made the top 100. Uh, with a little luck, too, if I didn't hand line that fish in. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, though, if I didn't hand line that fish in, I wouldn't have made it either. Oh, yeah, congrats to the other anglers that made the top 100, too. For sure. There were a lot of them, man. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of big names, sticks. Got in there. But, but like a lot of California people made it too, like Arizona. Three you know, you guys Rachel, made it. Anthony, me, and then a lot of Arizona guys. Cheers yeah. to them. Heck yeah. And again, Greg would be in the top 100 if Dude. I weren't there. <laughs> I'm going to the, I'm get the call tonight. I am not in contention. Tomorrow's going to be a fun fishing day tomorrow. But not it's in not contention on. for, um, it's not on yet. Oh, make sure, guys, on? if you're going to book an Airbnb, make sure it doesn't stink. If you if you can check that out first. <laughs> How you <laughs> you don't ask. ask. They, should be, they should put, like, a stink rating on Airbnb. Oh, we can do it. Oh, this side looks better. Dude, I'm kind of buzzed. Look at this crankbait, guys. We're going to throw this tomorrow as good old DT6. We're going to do some deep diving. Oh, it's a Rapala. I told you, dude, it's a DT6. That was sharp. I think it like this. All right, guys, it's a wrap. Anyways, cheers. See you on day three. What up, guys? made it to the top 100 we're at Kentucky Lake still and we're just gonna go out and have fun we're nowhere close to the top 30 top 20 nowhere close but uh, just squeezed in happy about that and let's just go have fun let's go fun go have fun Yeah, so since we're not in contention for a top 30, I decided to just fish some new water, practice more on this lake, just in case, you know, I have to come back here and fish another tournament. Uh, it's good to have some knowledge and build up my strengths in the game. So yeah, we're just sticking with the square bill and trying to find like, what these fish are holding on to. The fish earlier that I caught was in a completely different area, but it had a lot of chunk rock and it went from zero feet from the bank um, to a flat of maybe two feet out. And then it would drop off into like six feet of water. So if you can find something similar, then that would be key, I believe. So we're gonna try to find the same thing. If we can't find chunk rock, we're gonna go little gravel, gravel banks. We're gonna make a long run to one of these uh, creek arms of a submerged creek bed. See if we can find some, uh, some chunk rock in there. Sorry guys, didn't have it on camera, but got this decent bass. Come on, get the crankbait. There we go, that's a good one, guys. Forgot the camera, apologize on that one, guys. It wasn't going anywhere. Day three fish, baby, on the KVD. KVD square bill, nice and moist. Fish and identifier and the release. <sighs> All right. That cools the nerve down. Nice 16 incher. We're just gonna work this area. 
Probably go up and down this stretch. Well, I didn't know uh, this was gonna happen today. But, um, ah, man. Woo, that's painful. I guess there's always a first time for everything, huh? Woo! It's pretty bad, dude. I got two barbs. I hold trouble hook in my hand. Yeah. Do you have any experience with it or no? No, I mean, I didn't know you got a tight braid around it or something. Ah. Are you going right now? Yeah. Oh, that hurt. All right, keep me up at the ramp once you get it out. <laughs> All right. <sighs> oh, got one out. Yeah, I don't know if tweezers will work. But uh, I've got like uh, uh, antibacterial cream and stuff in there too. Do you have alcohol swabs and stuff? Okay, cool. Yep, and then here's like... Antibacterial? Yeah. What? Should we like YouTube it and then <laughs> try to figure, have you figure it out? Probably not, probably not. Are you sure? <laughs> I'm sure. I'm a fishing Instagram or no? I, I do, it's just, uh, it's my... JT Kinzer is my name. You said it's J T K I N S E R. K I N. On Instagram. S I R. S E R. All right, we're gonna go to the ramp and see what we could do about this hook. I know it's uh, still an hour left, but today was just all about having fun, and this is uh, this is it. You know, I'm gonna end the trip with a hook in my hand, but it had to happen at some point, and uh, we'll see if I can get someone to pull it out. You know how to do it? I'll be a, a nurse. Sort of. Oh, okay. But I do that's the best technique too, is just to yank case. that sucker. Okay, and there's a hook. There's a bar. There's like a bar. The other way. I've seen it all the time, though. You know. Yeah. You guys can be able to do it, no problem. If someone to hurt you, right? buddy. That's my only, my only concern. <laughs> Make sure the angle is right when I'm. How long do you need? Well, need not too long. Cut. That's probably good enough. Like, right here. Yeah, I cut it like here so we have a little extra. Because what we'll do is. Double it up like this. Tell basically. me, tell me what. Well, you're taking the. So just, I won't do it, but you would take this. Yeah. Right. And just pull. And then, yeah, and then he's got to lay his hand down flat. Do you, you need to wrap it, it at all or no? No, it's just a good old. I'm not gonna do it. Um, but yeah, you would just do this, get it as tight, you know, get this as tight. The, uh, that would be something yeah, if you actually did it down and on I didn't, that and you didn't know that you know. were going to do it. Boom! Yeah. <laughs> okay. Should we do it on we the gotta, Black you Pack Pro? Oh, shoot, my yeah. bad, dude. Here. Yeah, you got a brace or something. All right, dude. <laughs> do, do you have, like, uh, what you So just hold it down like that, or do you yeah. want to hold it down? hold it. Uh, sides. You want me to count down or just do it? I don't know, man. <laughs> just do it, man. What's your name? Adam Connor. Adam Connor, thank you, yeah, sir. Nice. Yeah. You good? Yeah. Is that okay? Not yeah. bad at all. Thank you so much. I don't know where it went. It's like shot somewhere, the hook. You should keep it as a souvenir. What was your name? Arian. Arian? Yes. Connor O'Connor? Oh, Adam Connor Fishing. Adam Connor Fishing. Oh, it's there, right there. There it is. Keep that. You want like some alcohol? Is Adam Connor. Yeah, Adam Connor. Yeah, recording. Antoine. Antoine? It's yeah. Adam Connor Fishing. <laughs> back England. <laughs> YouTube channel. Oh, okay. There you go. Yeah, just comment on one of my videos. We'll, we'll link up. Yeah, man. Where are you from? Yeah. California. Cali, dude. I'd love to make it out there, man. Dude, come out. Yeah, man. Fly down. I, I'll get a friend to like lend you a kayak. Yeah. 
All right, guys, that's a wrap for the KBF National Championship. I believe I finished 97th overall in the NC. I finished 48th in the Trail Series Championship and 58th in the Challenge Series Championship. Overall, a great season. Uh, I couldn't be pleased with my results. results. I am I was satisfied with my results, but I um, expected a little bit more coming into this national championship. Of course, I wanted to make the 10, but didn't happen. But I put everything out there, and so that's all I could be satisfied with. Um, that's all I could be happy with is that I put my all my energy out there, and uh, obviously there's things <clears throat> to learn in this game. Key takeaways, I need to learn creek and river systems more intensively. I need to find a secondary pattern just in case my first pattern doesn't work out. Um, during the morning times, it was hard for me to catch any fish and straight off in the morning. All my bites came in the afternoon. And uh, lastly, you know, I had a lot of fun and I didn't put too much pressure on me and I just went out there and went fishing. And I believe that helped me kind of get into the groove sooner after i meet that huge long run after day one what really helped me out is turning on some chill tracks on my way to the northern part of the lake um, took an hour drive to get there and the last thing i wanted to do is spin out so took a relaxing one hour of chill time with some chill time tracks on spotify and uh yeah and that really helped calm the nerves a little bit more but yeah overall had a great time uh, 2024 the plans are to make it to the KBF NC championship but I want to see kind of the field I want to see the organization make it a little bit more fair for for the anglers that are coming out from the west coast because we're going out 2,000 miles away to get there and um, would like to see some sort of fair playing ground in terms of the body of water and etc so that way uh, we have a good chance of making the 10 so very pleased with myself with the overall finish and i uh, got to give it up to some of my sponsors uh z pro being the number one sponsor of mine uh supporting me through the thick and thin my girlfriend of course but i really gotta thank greg ellingson that helped me out through through the trip you know uh my partner greg helped me out from los angeles going out to tennessee uh, stopping on the way a few times to get my tires repaired, uh, looking for fix a flat for me, and uh, splitting all the costs because it is extremely expensive to go all the way out there. So uh, for you guys to even watch this whole entire video, um, I'm blessed. Thank you guys for your support. Um, I definitely got to be more responsible with the funds and and try to find ways to save more money because at the end of the day, um, we can't continue to do this unless we have the resources to travel across the, the nation. So there, be on the lookout for more special perks if you guys are um, sus subscribed to the channel. And if you aren't subscribed, hit that subscribe button if you're interested in all these series. The next series coming up will be the American Bass term of champions where uh first place is a fully first place is five thousand dollars um with a motor guide but angle of the year is all up for grabs as well uh right now i'm currently leading with two points and it's gonna be a tough battle winner of uh the angler of the year championship is a fully rigged hobie pa 14 180 drive with the motor guide bow mount and electronics i believe um so that'll be an interesting series that's going to be over at lake margarita and lake lopez so be on the lookout for that uh lastly comment below what's your craziest fish catch of the tournament um or if you're fun fishing is it hand lining a fish and a fish coming up out of nowhere? Is it a lure hanging on a limb and then a bass all of a sudden just grabs that lure? Tell me your story below. After all, this is community. This is a kayak community, a fishing community. And I want you guys to be able to share your stories on my channel as well. So thanks again. Very blessed uh, to have you guys watch my video and uh, keep
keep on the lookout for the next series coming up. Peace.